Good morning. It's uh, about 5.40 in the morning, and I'm going to take you on a walk. Excuse the bedhead, um, but I already made some coffee. I'm going to pack my bag. Let me just show you what that entails. I'm using my camera bag. This camera bag is from Sunny16. The reason I'm using my camera bag is because I take my camera with me, or at least for this walk I do. So I have the compartment for that and I will be taking some extra batteries as well. You really only need like a tote bag or even just really large pockets for the most part. I would suggest if you are going to bring anything, then bring some extra bags from groceries that you have just to keep in your bag so that if you find any litter, you can pick that up. It makes a really good offering for wherever area that you're going to and that and also it's just nice for your community and nice for nature and the environment for you to pick up trash. So I usually have a stack of bags here just in case. This bedhead is like wild today. Then I also have this tea can that um, used to have tea in it but now it's just an empty canister so if you also want to bring jars or something but I prefer to try to not bring any glass just in case it breaks. Now to counteract what I just said I also have little test tubes up here and a small bottle from probably some hot sauce or something that I had um, in case I want to collect water of some sort. For the most part it's pretty rare that I usually do just because I only collect things if I really need them for a spell or if I'm using them for something. But I do have these little test tubes that in case I find any um, insects that have passed away that are in good condition, I like to pin them. But th again, that's same thing with this tin in case it's something larger like a butterfly. Last thing I will say you should bring is a notebook of some sort, especially being that this whole video is kind of about learning your local plants. So bring a notebook and a pen. That about does it for all the things that you're gonna need. But these are the things that I carry. <laughs> This is something that's important for everyone, even people who don't practice, is just to have a general understanding and a general relationship with the land that they live on and the plants and the animals that they share their home with. Kind of disheartening of how disconnected many of us are and the more you start to gain a relationship, you just see your home differently and the land differently. And it is interesting because when you gain this relationship and you live somewhere for an extended period of time, and then say you move somewhere else, for instance, when I grew up in Colorado and then moved to California, it was like a whole different other kind of culture shock. It was because I didn't recognize a lot of the plants and there were a lot of different fauna that I had never seen in person or that I had never really created a relationship with. So it was just interesting. And then coming back, it was kind of like seeing old friends, old family members, old neighbors that I knew really well and I was really happy to see again. So it is interesting to gain a relationship and kind of see the world in this different lens. If I could have you take away anything from this video, only one thing, my hope is that you take away just to be curious. My hope is that you are inspired to be curious about what is around you and who is growing and living around you and just exploring that and researching that and gaining a new knowledge and perspective on your, your plant and animal neighbors. How to start getting a relationship and getting an understanding of your local area is just find an area that you can walk in that has some sort of nature uh, that you can visit often. So. I am lucky, uh, there's quite a few little open spaces just kind of in Denver and around Denver. There's a good amount of parks and the mountains really aren't that far away from me. So I have easy access to nature. Now, when I was living in California, specifically LA, that was a little harder to find. However, there are still a lot of plants. So if you spend enough time and you go there often, there's actually still a lot to see. There's a lot that grows there. There's a lot of animals that live there and that you can gain a relationship with. So don't feel like 
you're completely disconnected from nature, even if you are a city-dwelling witch. I think that that's something that people get disheartened by. Of course, you know, when you're a practitioner, a lot of people want to live in the woods or in the swamp or just like in nature, just surrounded by trees and live in your little cottage. And while that's 100% the dream, that's not exactly feasible for a lot of us. A lot of us live in the cities, a lot of us live in the suburbs or in apartments. If what you have at access is the park down the street, then that is what you have at access and utilize that. Step number two is to visit often. This gives you an idea of what the plants look like all year round. You'll start to see and recognize certain plants and know where they are. So now my trail that I like to go on, I know where the plants are. I know where the cottonwood trees are. I know where the hawthorns are. I know where the black lotus trees are. And it's because I'm there all the time. So I would say a minimum, if you can, at least try to go once or twice a month. But if you can go at least weekly, that would be, that would probably be best. This is also important because you'll probably start to recognize the fauna that live there. For instance, there are two blue jays that live in the area that I like to walk, and they definitely keep an eye on things. I also notice that there's a specific squirrel that I see often that I know lives in one of the couple of trees that I always see him in, and the only reason I know that it's that specific squirrel is because he's a little rounder and actually only has half a tail. So you start to recognize a lot of these animals and a lot of these plants and they become really familiar and kind of comforting to see over and over. So then once you actually start taking your walks, I want you to be curious. I want you to pick out a couple of plants or maybe insects or animals that interest you. There are a couple of plant apps that you can use such as PlantNet and Picture This. I personally prefer Picture This, but now apparently on iPhone, if you take a photo of a plant, it also like lets you identify it if you click the info on the photo. I have yet to try that, but I have been told this. Take some photos and try to identify them. It also helps if you can cross-reference, if you can get some kind of field guide for your area. And you can usually find field guides in any kind of bookstore that's near you. Usually an area that has like local information, books on like local history, local plants. You can usually go to that section and they have field guides and you can cross-reference. So once you take the photo, on the app and it tells you what it thinks it is, you can flip through one of these field guides and see if that corresponds and see how accurate that is. Then that also gives you a little bit more information about that plant. You can learn folklore, you can learn medicinal properties if it has any, or edible properties, as well as looking up the symbolism and seeing what you might be able to use this in your craft for. Now moving over to working with local spirits, this is kind of the same thing. So when you're continuously going on this walk on this trail, you're going to get a vibe for kind of how it feels. I want you to really pay attention to what it feels like there, right? Because there are certain spots even on the same trail all the way through that I walk and there are certain spots that feel a little heavier and a little more intense than other spots. There are other spots that feel more protective and then there are other spots that feel a little more empty and kind of quiet in the energetic spiritual sense. So just kind of get a feel for it and start to take a mental note of where those spots are and what they feel like. Then you can also point out the land guardians and this is important because these spirits are the ones that kind of overlook. They are the protectors and sometimes some of them are more gentle and some of them are more intense depending on the spirit themselves. Now there is a specific land guardian that I grew up next to that I absolutely adore and I actually took a couple of bark pieces from him after asking if I could and using them in my craft for later charms and protection amulets and such. Most of the time these guardians are going to be very large old trees or often they linger in really powerful bodies of water. And also I have encountered some land guardians that are in really large meadows that don't really have a certain attachment to a specific uh, plant or animal of sort, but you will start to point them out and it will become easier and much easier to point them out when you meet them. 
The next one is give offerings. Favorite kind of offering is just bringing an extra grocery shopping bag and picking up any trash that I see. Now I go on this trail that I personally go on very often, so there's not all that much trash anymore, which is kind of nice. However, there is always that chance that somebody's going to be taking that trail or taking that walk and just throwing their trash or maybe something blew out of the trash can. You know, it happens. So it's always nice to just pick that up and clean it up a little bit. Other offerings can include small nature friendly crafts. So you can, you know, do a couple of things with fallen sticks that you've seen, arrange fallen flowers, and plants in a specific way that just kind of looks pretty. You can also put little sigils like protection sigils and stones or pieces of wood or sticks that you find and giving them back to the land as an offering to protect the area. Now if you actually want to work with them, now you've been going to this trail for a little bit and you feel a little bit more in tune and familiar with these plants, these animals, and these spirits. So if you take anything from this area that you're going to, best results always come from if you just ask first. And this doesn't have to be out loud, but I think that it's better if you just ask out loud and just let them know what you're using this for. So for example, if I'm taking some of this Virginia Creeper, I would let it know that I'm using it in a success spell. How do you know if it's a yes or no. For the most part, land spirits seem to be pretty easy going, especially ones that are in more urbanized areas. Unless you get like a really bad feeling, <laughs> like a really bad feeling, like you really shouldn't be taking something, or if you know you ask and immediately a bird shits on your head, then maybe that's a no. But for the most part, just asking, they don't really mind if you take a little bit. And lastly, I want you to get creative. So once you've done a little bit of research, you have a little bit more of an understanding and a relationship with the area that you've been visiting often, or even just a few times and you feel welcome. When you understand the symbolism, the folklore, and the uses of these specific plants that you come into contact with, then get creative of how you can use them. So for example, bindweed, I would use probably more in baneful workings. Maybe something like if I wanted to bind someone, I would either carve their name or a sigil that I made for them on a piece of wood or a stick that I found in my local area, go to Gribble paper and put those together, and then maybe find some bindweed and wrap the bindweed around, and as the bindweed grows, it would bind around it more and more. A very effective spell that I have found, so if you have bindweed in your area, then feel free to use that. Get an understanding, start to get to know the plants in your area, and the interesting thing too is once you start recognizing these plants just on the trail, you might actually start to recognize these plants that are peeping through on the sidewalk or just on the street and you'll start to see these familiar faces and know that you have allies everywhere and then maybe weeds won't be weeds to you anymore and lastly if you would prefer that this was just in your backyard or on your patio I do highly highly suggest and highly recommend that you look into local plants that support your pollinators first of all they're pretty and second you'll probably start seeing more bees and butterflies and birds in your area if you do end up planting some of those in your backyard or potting them in a patio and also see if you can find some plants that are pollinators for moths in your area because Let's be honest, a lot of us forget about the moths. But that is kind of the rundown of working with local spirits. I do want you to really get out there and just start to get to know your land. And the last bit I will say is once you gain a relationship with the spirits, even if you don't end up working with them directly in your craft, you do have that relationship. So it's kind of like if you started to get to know your neighbors really, really well. Once you have that relationship, they're going to be more prone to protecting you anyway, especially if they like you. Especially if you're giving nice offerings and you're cleaning up their area and they know that you are there to help and you are also an ally. So it is interesting to see that little shift of both energy, protection and also you start to kind of notice the plants and the fauna a little more in a different way and I'm not sure how to explain it so go out and get a relationship with your local area and you can see what I mean so that's all that I have for this video I hope that you enjoyed I hope that you are going to go out and learn a ton and just see your land for the wonderful interesting plants and animals that it has and I hope that you meet some really interesting and helpful spirits along the way but that's all that I have for this video for you. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Best of luck, be kind to each other, and may your gods treat you as you've treated others. Bye.